one are you? <laughs> did you notice the lyrics of the song Get Up? Huh? What did the song say? What does the lyrics say? You, you, everything is all for you, you, we're living each day for you, you, everything is all for you, you, we're living each day for you. Huh? Everything is all for you. We're living each day for you. Just a Sunday. You could not even give your time to the Lord. Sapul. <laughs> Amen. So the all out, they always give every possible time for the Lord. Why? Because you, we've been singing, we're trying to sing, everything is all for you. Every day, each day, we're living for you. Are we living for the Lord? Are we living on that song? I don't think so. <laughs> after, after this sermon, I will start thinking of the next sermon. After Tuesday Bible study, I will start thinking of what it could be my next topic for next Tuesday. Rather than every Sunday morning, oh, it's Sunday, time to practice. <laughs> time to read my Bible, it's Sunday. How about Monday to Saturday? <laughs> Nothing, my goodness. <laughs> okay, so Psalm chapter 69 verse 9. Because seal for your house has eaten me up. Because seal for your house. Oh, why is it doubled? Uh, it was with the PowerPoint. Unformatted or formatted. Because seal for your house has eaten me up. Do you understand that? No? Oh, I don't understand it as well. <laughs> no. If, if. The psalmist said, even Jesus quote this verse, the seal for your house consume me, has eaten me up. It's just like what makes you tired is everything for the Lord. What occupies your mind is for the Lord because it is your seal. It is your feeling. It is your enthusiasm to do what you're supposed to be doing. Amen? Okay, let's say for example, no offense, uh, although I'm late as the, uh, compared to the choir, I just, reach, I just reached here before the intercession finished, but I'm doing something before we came here, or my wife is doing something, I could not leave her behind. But my point here is, my mind is always occupied with everything for the Lord. I don't have to tell you how tired I am or I, how tired I will be during my work. After this service, I'll be working tonight while you are snoring. Well, it's my fault. I want to earn more money. I'm not going to tell you why. <laughs> but I, I'm not making reservation just like Pastor Romel shared. Those, uh, th those good uh, b basketball players they, they are reserving their energy, their talent during, during national or Olympics or uh, Asian, Asian co conference or Asian league. Why? Because they are reserving their talent or their potential for the commercial ones. I'm not saying I could not leave Pastor Romel, Pastor Ronald behind. I, I don't trust them uh, to, uh, uh, dealing with the equipments. I feel so guilty that I wasn't here in the morning. I could not help them after the service. So although I'm working tonight, I still help them after they, their practice. All out me. But if you're not hot, if you're not all out, simba uwi. After the service, lunch, then go home. That's it. Ay, baot balot pa pala. Ha, ha, ha. 
Balot is try to uh, take away some foods. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Taking something or, or bringing some food away is, is just good enough. Rather than leave it alone, even Jesus Christ, He said that, that look after, wrap those leftovers. Two baskets. He didn't say, don't worry about it. We can do another miracle tomorrow. Kasi mapanis lang. Hindi uwi mo na. nakabawi eh paano kung puro balot walang luto <laughs> there's nothing wrong with, with wrapping or getting some take away the problem there is if you love getting our taking away and then you don't cook <laughs> and that is why that is why we are a family here you don't need to cook a lot as long as we celebrate your birthday. That's it. We share our food for all the people in the church. Amen? Okay. So, what to do to avoid being lukewarm? First, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Hear God's word. Listen to God's word. So you could, you could not be a lukewarm. You, get, you won't get cold, but you keep your fire going. Amen? Second, repent. After hearing what the Spirit of the Lord says, repent. Change your mind. By changing your mind, you will be able to change your actions. You could not change your actions without changing your mind. And that is why repentance is so important. Oh, pastor, I have given my life to the Lord. I have accepted the Lord for so many years. Does it mean I still have to repent? Yes. Not unless you're not sinning anymore. Does that make sense? Every time we sin, we need to repent. Amen? Okay. Third, hear His voice and open your heart to the Lord. You could keep hearing His word, you could repent, but you could not. Not all people are opening their hearts for the Lord. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, Behold, I knock at the door, and if anyone hears my voice and open the door, I will come in and dine with him. Amen? Aside from people who could be warm-hearted, there are people who are open-hearted. Does that make sense? Open-hearted? I remember my father, um, he disciplined us so much and, and that is why I like my father. Although he was also a binge drinker, he died at the age of 49 because he loves drinking so much. I love my father. Although he always punishes me, he is always disciplined me, he always chastised me, but I love the way my father brought me up. And I remember when we were still young, I'm still young today, <laughs> because he is open-hearted, our house during typhoon is for everybody. We accommodate three or four families during typhoon because our house, although they are, they are both teachers, we are not that rich, but our house was concrete. It's for everybody. Whether we eat sagging, we eat kamote, everything in the table is for everybody. There is no such amin ito. We don't own the food ourselves, but whatever is in the table is for everybody, including those neighbors who stay with us during the typhoon. Why open-hearted? Some people could be open-minded, but they could, it doesn't mean that they are open-hearted. Let me give you an example. There are people who are so open-hearted that they are close-minded. I'll show you my example, a good example. When somebody comes to them, Oh, Mare, sister, pl please lend me money. You know you need that money, but because you are open-hearted, 
You cannot refuse somebody. Yes. Whereas there are also people who are who are open-minded but close-hearted. They will say, "Mm-mm, nangutang ka na sa akin. Hindi ka na maka- nagbayad. Hindi ka na makaulit. Thank you very much." <laughs> Does that make sense? There are people who say, mm-hmm, I've lent money to you before, but since you haven't paid anything, you will never be able to borrow from me any- anymore. Never. Nunca. <laughs> yes? And that is why they are co- uh, 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 close-hearted. Open-hearted for the Lord, or o- people who are open-hearted for the Lord, are always open-hearted for their neighbors as well. Amen. Yes? <laughs> so, aside from that, be zealous for the Lord. How could we be zealous for the Lord? Be excited for the Lord and delight yourself in the Lord. You could not develop your zeal for the Lord without delighting yourself in the Lord. Somebody asked me, Pastor, how could I delight myself in the Lord? It's a matter of decision. It's Sunday today. I should, I make myself happy. I delight. I took, I cherish going to church. Because you're delighted. It's a decision to make. Just like Sister Ben said, it's better to be all Sunday every day. Am I right? Yes? Okay? Be enthusiastic for the Lord or put your heart on what you do for Him. Just a short illustration. Uh, when I was in El Shaddai, uh, because I, I'm not a sip sip type of person, I don't usually, uh, <laughs> I don't usually seek help, or I don't want to be favored by those who are into, uh, uh, with authorities. I'm always sent to the small prayer meeting, and that time the small prayer meeting, the love gift or the love offering they're giving to the preachers are 300, 150. Kung nasa, kung nasa Laguna ka at Bataan or ba, <laughs> Pampanga, tama lang pamasahe. It's just enough for your fair or bus fares. So it's not, it's not enough. But for those other people who are known in the, in the ministry, uh, the love offering would be a thousand pesos and that was maybe from 90 to, to 2003. A thousand pesos that time is much highly appreciated. Are, are you following? So, <laughs> and we have a habit of asking, well, we, uh, where are you going today? Uh, I'm going to Laguna. Ah, kukunti, love offering dyan. <laughs> but some people say the love offering or the, the love gift to the pastors are so little. But someday, or sometimes, they said, you're going to Batangas? Ah, tatlong nakapangalubaba yan. It's, it's at uh, 1500 in the Philippine money. Oh, that's a lot. Sabi, uh, so the pastor said, Galingan Munoy, maraming tao dyan. <laughs> so he's trying to say, Give your best because there's plenty of people there. Me, no offense, I'm not comparing myself. I don't care how many people are listening to God's word my seal for the Lord is always the same no offense and that is why you always see me sweating <laughs> because I give my heart with what I'm doing Amen. they say uh, if, if you are new in preaching you're always excited you're always on high pitch I've been preaching for 21 years. I'm still excited. Hallelujah. Rather than your preaching in the prayer meeting or your praying, manalangin tayo. As if wala kang kabuhay-buhay. <laughs> There's no life and no energy. You're not showing interest on what you're doing. Amen? Okay, so, zealous means feeling or showing strong an energetic support for a person. Are you that zealous for the Lord? You're feeling or showing strong an energetic support for God? Mm. Hello? 
Am I still talking to anybody? <laughs> oh my goodness, my time is almost, almost finished. Fifth, for us not to be lukewarm, the Lord said, buy gold from me refined in fire. Just like today, uh, gold business is all over the world. It's just like, what are the gold business? <laughs> Interval. <laughs> uh, global. <laughs> Whatever gold is that. Because gold is very good investment. It's more than money. Its value is more than money. That's why the Lord said, buy gold from me, refine in fire. So the idea of buying is exchanging what you wanted with what you have. Does that make sense? So Jesus said, buy gold from me, give your money in exchange, and I will give you the gold. Does it make sense? Okay? So 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if needed be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes, Though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So, literally or spiritually speaking, in, as equivalent to gold is our faith with God. It should be genuine. It should be tested. Amen? Rather than with just a little test, you give up your faith. Okay? So, Overcome tests and trials in verse 21. Because the Lord says, For those who overcome as I have overcame, I will let them sit, sit in, the father, in the Father's throne, throne as I am sitting with the Father. Okay? Six, be rich before God. Are you rich before God? Yes? Okay, he said, First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 up to 19. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Command those who are rich. Why? Let them do good that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share. Verse 19, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold. On eternal life. Amen? Okay. Last or third to the last, buy white garments. Just like what the tambourineers are doing. White garments. Okay? Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 and 8. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. The wife of the Lord Jesus Christ is the church. All of us. Verse 8, And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. In other words, if you are not rich before God, if you are poor before God, you, you could also be naked before God without righteous acts, without righteous deeds, good works. Amen? I'm not sure what are you thinking at the moment. <laughs> just like just like the tambourineers, they've got they got long uh, long uniform up to the heel rather than you are wearing mini skirts. And I don't understand women. They wear mini skirts and they pull it every time because they don't want some other people to see them. So why we why we wear mini skirts? I think they, they are they are they are saving money for the clothes. Why? Because that top they bring it low. The one in the below they bring it up, and they keep on pulling. <laughs> so. The righteous acts of the saints is our white garments before God. We should not be naked. We should not be stingy with clothes. Okay? Anoint your eyes with eye salve. I'm running out of time, so I have to make it a, a bit uh, fast. Eye salve is a pregnant powder mentioned by Galen 
for which the medical school of Laodicea seems to have been famous, but the figurative reference is to the restoring of spiritual vision. Because the Lord says, you are blind, you are poor, you need eye salves. You need eye ointment so you can restore your vision. Amen? Okay? Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth it the law, happy is he. So if you are blind, you don't have vision, you will perish. And Matthew 15, 14 says, the blind could not lead the blind. Both of them will fall into the ditch. Yes? Nine, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Proverbs 3, 11, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. Why? Chastening is part of God's loving to us, God's love to us. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Revelation 3.19. So when the Lord is chastening you, the Lord is disciplining you, he's just, it's just a part of his love for us because he wanted our faith to be genuine. Yes? Before I forgot, uh, I would like to I would like to top up or say something on what Pastor Rommel has shared when it comes to offering. Do you know what's the re aside from the reason you've mentioned that? Uh, 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 okay, C Cain offered. How, how did you say it? Aside from the reason that the Lord did not accept uh, Cain offering was any idea? He offered his offering in in. Huh? Leftover or in the process of time. Did you notice it? Yes? Okay, I will read it to you. Revelation, oh, no, re not Revelation. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4 verse, verse 3. Okay. Genesis 4, 3. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. While Abel offered the first fruit, or uh, not first fruit, uh, the firstborn, the firstborn. In other words, when Abel had the, 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 the lamb, the firstborn, he offered it to the Lord. Cain offered in the process of time. So the leftover, he wasn't excited. He didn't do it in the first place. The first, he, he didn't offer the first harvest. While Abel, he offered the firstborn. Panganay. Bago pa nasundan, inoffer na. While Cain, he offered in the process of time. And I always say, I'm not telling you who, which person or who is the person I'm always telling her of. Because even your tithes, you should do it in the first place, not in the process of time. Are you getting me? So every time you receive your salary, offer it right away to the Lord, not in the process of time. Not after you have paid your credit card. Not after you have paid your flat rentals. Not after you have sent money to the Philippines. Not in the process of time, but firstborn. That is the first thing you need to do. Priority. Rather than, oh, it's almost salary day again. You haven't paid your tithes yet. That's not good. That is why it wasn't pleasing to the Lord because he did it in the process of time. Am I making my point clear? Last, last. Few minutes. <laughs> last. Anybody has noticed my post in Facebook? Some people are trying to run without even learning how to walk. Do you understand what does it mean? Huh? You're getting ahead of what? Uh, not really. If I say you're trying to run spiritually, even without learning how to walk, 
Should I say it? Yes. Let's say, for example, just like what you, you posted in Facebook. Was that post for God Most High Music Ministry or for everybody? Worship team. Okay, because her post, I've seen that post already with the pastor, by the pastor back home. Here, her post said, uh, a worshiper or a, a member of the worship team must first be a tighter. Why? Because if you're, if you're not a tighter, you don't give your tithes, you are a robber in the eyes of God. So if you are a robber, whatever you do for God is not pleasing for God. You're violating the tithes in a way. Does it make sense? Okay, let me read Deuteronomy 15.21. We're almost finished. Deuteronomy 15.21, if there is a defect in it, 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 if it is lame or blind or has any serious defect, you shall not sacrifice to the Lord your God. So, if the animal is blind, if the animal is lame, do not offer it to God because what God demands as a sacrifice must be perfect. Yes? So, it's just like perfect or nothing. How could you say, I serve the Lord and then you are a, a robber in, uh, in the eyes of God because you're not giving your tithe. So, that's make, that makes sense. Before you worship, you should obey or you should be a tither. Tithes. You don't understand tithes? I don't. Tithes, tithes. The 10%. Yeah, tithes. 10%. Uh, it's okay. Okay, another example. Another example. No offense, huh? No offense. Some people are willing to serve the Lord, but fix your relationship with the Lord first. You could not serve the Lord without fixing your relationship because it is not blameless. It's with blemish. It's with wrinkles. Does that make sense? Let's say for example, let's say for example, if I'm having an affair and I haven't repented my sins with, with the affair that I had, do you think the Lord will, will be pleased with me even if I preach? No. And it is so with us. If we could not walk with the Lord, we could not run with the Lord. And that is why Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17, I have run the race. He wasn't walking. Do you think you will walk the race? No. That's why he said, I have run the race. I have kept the faith. And what awaits me is the crown of glory. Amen? Are you running the race? Before you run, you need to start walking first. Amen? And before you learn to walk, you have to learn crawling. Amen? Okay, challenge. Are you hot? Cold or lukewarm? <laughs> At least it's nice, it's nice to reflect. It's nice to think about it rather than we've been attending church for so many years and we're not considering about it. So you know yourself which kind of which category do you belong? Are you hot, cold, or lukewarm? Prove it. <laughs> <laughs> are you rich before God? Huh? Are you rich before God? Rich of good works? You're open-hearted to, especially to the needy people? Okay? Do you have spiritual vision? Because people without vision will perish. They're blind. And the blind leaders could not lead the blind because both of them will fall into the ditch. Are you having spiritual vision? Will God not spew you out? The lukewarm people are used to be inside the church, inside the kingdom, but once they're not maintaining their fire burning, they will get, become lukewarm and the Lord will spit them out. <laughs> Conclusion.
Revelation, Revelation chapter 3, verse 18, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. Now I will let the choir sing that song once again, Get Up, and I hope this time you will be reflecting on the lyrics of the song. That every, every line, every words you've uttered to the door, you're, you will be standing on it. You will do it with all your heart. Okay? Come on. Get up, get up, get up. <laughs>
just singing the song. We're not just singing or uttering the lyrics because it's what the song says. I hope it's coming from our hearts. And we would try to live on it. We would mean what we are singing for the Lord. That line of that song itself touches my heart. And I could say, I'm on fire for the Lord. Amen? I invite you to offer our offerings and prayer requests to the Lord. We lift it up to the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord God, once again, we thank you for everything that you have done. We thank you for all the blessings we've continually received from you. Despite our shortcomings, despite our unfaithfulness to you, Lord, you remain faithful to each and every one of us. We pray, Lord, that you would bless our offerings. You bless our tithes so that we will harvest from it. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And we also pray for our prayer request, O oh God. Whatever request, whatever the desires of our hearts, may it be written or not, may it be uttered or not, we claim, Lord, that as we unite ourselves in prayer, as we, uh, we claim your, your word, O oh God, that where two or three agree in one thing in prayer, it will be granted unto them in Jesus' name. And we pray for those people who are not here with us. We pray for our loved ones, O oh God, for those who need, needed healing. Let them uh, uh, receive your healing right now, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Let your hand be stretched on them and let them receive complete healing in Jesus' name. We pray for Errol, we pray for Mama Gloria, we pray for Sister Linda, Sister Minda.